Det er helt, helt utrolig spennende å få være med på dette forsøket. Hei, hva er det for med en fantastisk intensitet opp til en megawatt har det vært beregnet at dette her lyser ut. Det lyser lenge. Hvor i all verden er ledningen da? Hestdalen. This remote mountain valley in Norway, 30 kilometers north of the mining town Røros, has a population of only 120. But why is there a blue container placed far up on one of the hillsides, with cameras covering the valley? The light phenomena here in Hestal in Norway started uh, in late 81, well, uh, with a lot of sightings. At the most it was 20 sightings a week. The local people here started to see the light down in the valley, sometimes close to their houses, and uh, they was wondering what could this be. People started to go up here and see if they could see it for themselves, and many people did. <laughs> Det er for langt unge, det er jo for halvt. Du må begynne å fotografere noe, Karin. Det er borti! Men da sto vi 30-40 personer og kikket. Og plutselig kom da dette lyset gjennom skydekket og ned langs fjellsiden og stoppet rett foran oss og seg forbi. Og vi fulgte det med blikket og nede i dalen lenger frem sto det et lys og ventet på den. Og i det øyeblikk falt jo alle mine teorier om dette her var helt uforståelig. A long oval-shaped light phenomenon appeared to be landing. It came up the valley, along the mountainside, stopped and rotated slowly. Så reiser den seg opp, så den står som en stake oppe på fjellet. Og da var det akkurat som... Når du ser inn i sola, så ser du en siluett inn i det lyset. This picture is taken with one sixtieth of a second exposure. The phenomena behaves very different. Some is moving very slowly and some lights can move very fast. The fastest speed we have ever measured was 30,000 kilometers an hour. We have also recorded uh, on the radar uh, uh, something moving without uh, being seen by a light, so it's, it's in invisible. The yeah, hestarn from the series in over here is circa 15 kilometers long. It's not so... Uh, så veldig stor da. Det har jo vært mye i, mot disse fjellene som dette har blitt sett veldig mye da. Many strange photos were taken of the phenomenon during the first years. The lights were difficult to capture on film due to long distances and rapid movements in the dark. Even on short exposures down to one hundredth of a second, the lights covered a large area of the film. What kind of lights would behave this way, night after night, in this harsh environment? I 84, tror jeg, på denne tiden på året, var vi nå å lette oss inn på låven her, og kommer ned ut i utgangsdøra, 
så registrerar vi ett annat som står överför oss. Och det är er ett lys som vi står och ser på som står och funkar det sånt som det här. Och det är er blågrönt och det står och ja, en cirka 5-10 sekunder. Det virkar som en evighet och så plötsligt så whoosh, så drar det bort över västöver. Was there more to this than only lights? Ja, jag ser två olika variationer. Ja. Men ni är med i blank och upplöst. Ja. Och men jag är er mer som cigarrforma och är er upplöst i bägge ändar med en svart parti en mörk parti med på. Bevegar det sig? Ja, i olika hastigheter. Och det händer så att det stoppar upp och står. Ja, på våru ser det i grann längre bort där. En åge skulle väga och köra tömmer ner på älven där en kväll med snöskutra. Så jeg skulle jag följa och hjälpa i och. Och där fick jag så det kom i lys ifrån sö. Och det var cirka 30 varmegrader i sola den dagen. Och helt klar himmel och då såg vi som en cylinder över fjellet her. Jeg kjørte opp med bussen om morgenen når hun var halv åtte, tenkte jeg oppover her, hestarslia, innover mot hestaren fra åren da, her. Og jeg var alene i bussen, og så når jeg kom nesten opp på toppen, så fikk jeg da se at det kom en, en lysende gjenstand. Det var jo på våren det her, men det var liksom en liten soloppgang, så at jeg så det glinse i metalle på det fartyget eller sånt da. Et blinkende slus innover hastaren. Stående speiler så på det plutselig så kommer det med en gjenstand. Da sto jeg og beskuet den der på cirka 300 meter avstand. Selv metallik hadde et blinkende rødt lys fremme. Og så var det to Blanke lys som stod lodret oppe på hverandre bak, da. Det var formet omtrent som en pistolkule på en, en 9 mm pistol. A small group of enthusiasts from UFO organizations in Norway and Sweden conducted the first investigations, partly supported from a university and with equipment from the military. Electromagnetic measuring equipment, low-frequency radio receivers, cameras and radar were mounted on a proper site with a good overview. Would it be possible to capture the phenomenon with this equipment? If so, this would be the evidence many were waiting for. And in the first winter in 1984, 53 observations were made during a month. And I'm impressed with Hestown itself because Hestown is really a UFO laboratory. It's a place where things are happening and where things can be studied. Well, once we uh, used a laser to point to the phenomenon when it showed up and it uh, reacted, well, it was a, at that time a flashing uh, light and when we pointed the laser beam to, uh, to, to it, it uh, changed uh, the flashing frequency it doubled the flashing frequency and uh, we take it down again and it went back to uh, regular flashing and we did this uh, test uh, nine times and in eight of those nine times it changed the flashing frequency. During the 1990s the frequency of observation slowly decreased. In the early 80s 20 observations would be made in a week. 20 to 30 are now made per year. In 1994, Erling Strand and his colleagues organized the first international conference on the phenomenon in Hestholm. Leading scientists arrived from eight countries, including the USA, Russia and Japan. The theories suggesting that the Hestholm phenomena are generated by reflections from car lights, trains, or that they are in some way connected to TV and radio transmitters are put to rest once and for all. This conference had one important consequence, that the phenomenon is now treated with more respect and for the population in the Hestalen Valley, this is a great relief. I think uh, that uh, this uh, effect is uh, very important in the future, especially in the practice. practice.
For example, you can use in this phenomenon like a container of energy, energy, pure energy. Research in Hestal enters a new phase that was to prove historic. Supported by the Ostfall University, the world's first 24-7 observatory for light phenomena is established in Hestalen. Radar and instruments for measuring electromagnetic noises run continuously, along with video recorders that are activated as soon as unusual aerial movements are detected. Each minute, the still cameras shoot overviews covering the valley and upload to the Internet. Several observations of the phenomenon have been obtained from these cameras all year round. But what about the video cameras? After a year's tense wait, it finally happens. The Hestalen phenomenon is caught on camera. Many people in Hestalen municipality have seen the light phenomena in Hestalen, and the community uh, is ser take it serious. And they, we are sure that there, there are something but we don't know and we want the scientists to take uh, to be serious and try to find out what the light phenomena is. We are at the Italian Center for Radio Astronomy in Medicina outside Bologna. The huge antennas are aimed at the stars. The scientists here are scanning the universe for sign of life. Conducted by the SETI program, search for extraterrestrial intelligence. After becoming aware of the Hestalen phenomenon, the Italian scientists traveled to Hestalen and had their own experience. From then on, they have supplied the Norwegian research team with valuable support. The signals are received and analyzed at the Bologna Radio Astronomy Center. The data collected inside the blue box in Esdal and, and also inside the Peder 5 is uh, sent every day automatically inside our server. So far, many interesting radar readings have been received from the lights, while photos have been taken simultaneously from the Norwegian Observatory. In this way, data have been confirmed. This phenomena uh, appear um, in uh, several parts around the world, also in Italy, in Australia, USA, uh, Thailand and so on. So many parts of the world. Uh, is uh, interested in uh, this kind of phenomena. This phenomena could, uh, could um, uh, give us information about some kind of unknown, uh, unknown form of energy. In my opinion, any kind of phenomena need to be unknown phenomena, need to be investigated. A new container with more advanced instrumentation is being assembled in Italy and will soon be placed near the top of the Rongne mountain in Hestalen. This cooperation between the Ostfold University and the Italians is an important incentive to research, now producing new amazing results. We saw the sea over in Dalen here, and midt på natta, so med two, three tiers, so it started to happen things. Det som hendte da var det at det så ut som det var et slags tett objekt. Det kunne se ut som en, kall det metallisk sky, som plutselig oppstod på et sted. Og så flyttet det seg, og fem ganger så klarte vi å ta bilder av akkurat dette skjedde. Og det siste som skjedde med den metalliske skyen, det var på størrelse da med love. Rett etter det, så stoppa den ilmörja lyse. I det det här skedde att den traff trätoppen där borte så kom det ut en blå spiralerande lysstreck. Den här blå lysstrålen, den träffar då toppen på ett trä där borte. Och med en gång den träffar det, rätt detta på det, så förändrar den bågelängden i hur den spiralerar bortåt. 
The results of the first four years of studies in cooperation with the Italians conclude that the phenomenon is identified as a bright flying object with special characteristics making it unique to science. The phenomenon is more complex and diverse than expected, indicating more than one single kind of phenomenon. The phenomenon is sometimes made up of separate units that may depart and fly away. The speed varies from still to 8 kilometers per second. The phenomenon changes course in speeds indicating no mass by physical means. The phenomenon seems to be able to take on pieces of plasma or energy from the ground while passing by. The phenomenon seems to radiate energy due to the light and frequent change of color. Many interesting spectra in the optical and radio frequency range have been detected, but more data is needed to draw proper conclusions. These scientific data are quite sensational. We are dealing with a real existing phenomenon that can be observed and studied even though this is difficult. The appearance of the phenomenon does not seem to follow any fixed patterns. In 2007, a large group of international scientists visit Hestalm as a part of a conference organized by the U.S.-based Society for Scientific Exploration. They're unpredictable whenever they arise. They, they're different shapes, different sizes, different intensities and different durations. And uh, so it's quite a curious uh, phenomenon. We have no explanation as to the cause at this time, and that's why it's a good scientific subject. Whether it is, as some people think, Earthlight uh, of geological origin, but I don't believe so from what I see as observations. I think it's much more complex. Hovedpoenget med utstyret her er jo å detektere noe som er spesielt ved hestgarsfenomenet. Du leter jo etter noe som skiller dette lyset fra alt mulig annet. Så den første her, det kamerasystemet her, det tar bilder med veldig lang åpningstid, pluss at det har et spektralgitter foran, så vi kan få se et optisk spekter og få fingeravtrykket til fenomenet. Så du det? Ja, se der er det. Der er det. Der er det. Synes du ute? Der da. Nei, det beveger seg. Hey! Check! 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 Check!
over in the other color here and we see no the no lines or dots here which will give us a signal of that we have a gas that is burning this looks like a optical spectrum from a solid object because molecular optical bands have very very narrow lines the Hestalm phenomenon is alive the scientists claim to be on the verge of a revolution within physics. We know there is a lot of energy in it. Uh, we have a lot of data, uh, oh, some indication on, on the power. And uh, if we find out what this, is, what this power is coming from, maybe we can use that power for the mankind.